Now I will go to the second lecture of this 10th week of this course and uh, in this lecture we will look at uh, very common crystal structures of binary compounds. Okay. In the last lecture we looked at the close pack structures and we looked at the crystal structures of elements. In this lecture I will look at uh, binary compounds and uh, one of the ideas that I will emphasize is uh, how, how we use the idea of close packing arrangement of uh, one of the two constituents of the binary compounds in, in this description. So, uh, week 10 lecture 2 will be crystal structures of binary compounds. So, uh, now uh, we will be looking at a uh, lot of structures based on a close packed arrangement. We most of the structures that I will be talking about today are based on a close packed arrangement, not all of them. Okay. Uh, now, uh, as as we have as we as we already know that uh, the cubic close pack and the hexagonal close pack are close pack structures with packing fraction of 0.74. Okay, and uh, the idea is to use is uh, is that we have a binary binary compound. So we have a binary compound something like uh, A X. Okay, and what we are going to do is use a close packed arrangement of one component and use voids for the other other component. So, so maybe A will be in a close packed arrangement and X will be in the voids. Okay. And we have already seen the voids in FCC and HCP. Okay. So, um, now one of the things that will happen is that uh, when you put this X in the voids, okay, then the, there will be a distortion in the cell. Okay. So, the close packing will become non-ideal. Okay. So, it would not be an ideal close packed arrangement. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, so the cell might expand okay, when you put this uh, atom x in the void. This description is very useful for ionic compounds. Okay. And uh, I am going to only talk about a few different uh, compounds, but actually there are different ways to classify these crystal structures. Okay. So, uh, one way to classify them is like Ax, Ax2, etcetera. The other way which we will be looking at is, uh, is to look at, uh, look at one of the components as either a close packed or, or, or some other uh, structure and the other, other uh, atom as present in the voids. Alternatively, we can also look at these in terms of space filling polyhedra, okay, which I will touch upon a little later. So, uh, now, uh, now let us look at the cubic close pack, cubic close pack or uh, FCC and uh, let us remind ourselves where the octahedral and tetrahedral voids are. I okay. will use a planar, I will show both the planar and, uh, and the three dimensional representation. So, uh, so, so if we say look at a cubic close pack, okay, the cube will look like this. And uh, and we have we have our uh, our first species. Let's say it forms a cubic close packed array. I'm not I'm not showing the spheres as touching each other. Okay, I'm just showing them small for ease of visualization. Okay, this is in the back face. There'll be one here. And the center of the front face and the center of the top. Okay, so these are the these are the this is the cubic like close packed arrangement and uh, the voids okay so the tetrahedral voids uh, are located at uh, one fourth along the body diagonal so along each of the body diagonals so there'll be one here uh, one along this body diagonal, along this body diagonal. So these all will be at a, these all will be uh, at the same height. 
okay and then there will be four more which are located at the center of these uh, at these other voids other four tetrahedral voids okay so these are the tetrahedral voids eight tetrahedral voids so there are eight tetrahedral voids in this conventional cell so in this conventional cell there are eight tetrahedral voids okay and then the octahedral voids okay will be there will be an octahedral void located right at the center okay and then it will be at each of the edge centers okay now there are 12 edge centers but uh, the void in an edge center okay belongs to multiple unit cells okay the void at each edge center belongs to three other unit cells so these 12 contribute only one fourth to this unit cell and the when the void at the center correspond uh, contributes one okay so we have a total of four octahedral voids okay so so in this close packed arrangement there are uh, eight tetrahedral and four octahedral voids let me let me for completeness show the planar representation because uh, this is much easier to draw okay so so this is the z equal to 0 plane this is z equal to 0 or 1 okay and then and then you have uh, let me show it in a in a different color in a in a slightly different color this is the z equal to half plane okay and these are these are the this is the structure of this is the cubic close packed structure okay and now the voids the voids will be located at uh, at 1/4 and 3/4 so these are the tetrahedral voids will be located right here at at z equal to 1/4 and 3/4 okay so they'll be voids located like this the octahedral void will be located so so there's i'm showing one at z equal to half okay z equal to half you will have you will also have uh, these edge center voids okay so z equal to half you will have exactly you will have exactly on top of these so these are at z equal to half and then you will also have you'll also have at uh, z equal to 0 so at z equal to 0 you can see you can see in this figure so there are uh, there are octahedral voids located at these edge centers these are at z equal to 0 okay so you have z equal to 0 z equal to half and and uh, z equal to 1 so you have you have octahedral voids located at, at each of those coordinates and uh, each of them are I'm showing so this is at z equal to 0 no, no sorry this is at z equal to half this is at z equal to half okay and at uh, z equal to 0 they will be located the octahedral voids at uh, z equal to 0 okay will be located at edge centers okay that will be that will be uh, directly below this okay so these are the octahedral voids located at z equal to 0 okay and uh, and similarly they will also be there at z equal to 0 and z equal to 1 okay so uh, this is the representation of the tetrahedral and octahedral voids in a cubic close packed structure and now and now we can go and 
try to imagine that uh, structures will be formed where the where usually the larger ion okay if you have a binary compound okay you have a cation and an anion then the larger ion will occupy the closed pack structures and the smaller ion can occupy uh, either the tetrahedral or the octahedral voids it may be some of the tetrahedral voids maybe not all okay so uh, we'll just look at a few representative structures i'm not trying to describe all the structures okay i'm just going to represent i'm just going to show a few representative structures okay so so the first two we'll consider are uh, rock salt and zinc blend okay so rock salt okay so uh, we can look at both of these as uh, so so rock salt is basically ccp plus octahedral voids so so ccp arrangement of uh, of anion and octahedral voids for cation okay and uh, in this particular case you can exchange them but uh, but uh, we'll just follow the we'll just follow convention where uh, we'll show the we'll show the anion as a ccp anion is typically the larger ion okay anion is typically larger in size than the cation and so at least at least in most of the structures we'll show the anion uh, forming the closed pack structure okay and uh, you can easily uh, see what it will look like okay so uh, so if i show if i if i use blue for the for so an example of compound that forms this is uh, is nacl na and let me use red for the cl okay this is uh, this this is an ionic compound so it is it, it actually it is in the form sodium plus and chloride minus okay and the chloride minus ions will form the will form the uh, closed pack structure so so you'll have a chloride which forms a closed pack structure again i'm not showing the the chloride ions as touching each other okay let's and uh, sodium ions will 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 occupy all the octahedral void octahedral void so there's one octahedral void right in the right in the middle of the cell that's an octahedral void and then and then there are octahedral voids at each of these edge centers so these will be occupied by sodium sodium ions okay so this is the rock salt structure okay and uh, it's a it's a very it's a very uh, common structure okay i mean it's a it's a very it's it's one of the first uh, first uh, um, and the simplest uh, binary structures that you that you will encounter okay now rock salt is actually quite common okay so in addition to sodium chloride there are other examples of rock salt of uh, compounds that crystallize in rock salt okay there are several oxides for example you take mgo cao sro barium oxide okay so you can see all the all the group 2 the alkali earth metals okay so they are oxides from this there are also some transition metal oxides like titanium oxide feo etc which form this in addition there are sulfides so, so uh, oxygen and sulfur are in the same group so so in addition you can also have sulfides like uh, mgs cas you can have uh, selenides again uh, mgse cac or even tellurides even even like calcium telluride okay forms in the structure 
okay so 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 these are oxides and sulfides okay and these uh, sulfides uh, selenides and tellurides additionally there are also like the like the alkali metal with a with a hal halide okay so al alkali halides so many alkali halides also crystallize in the structure for example lithium fluoride lithium chloride lithium bromide lithium iodide uh, again we already saw nacl but also sodium fluoride sodium bromide kf kcl and i don't i don't want to go there are several others okay uh, there is uh, rubidium rubidium chloride uh, silver chloride okay so there are there are several others i'm just showing a few examples okay just to say that you know this rock salt is not unique only to sodium chloride the same rock salt structure is found in several several uh, binary compounds okay. now the the next structure that i'm going to talk about is uh, is again something that you have already seen which is uh, zinc blend or sphalerite okay so here you have a ccp of anion and half of tetrahedral voids for the cation occupied by the cation okay and uh, again again we can we can show the we can show the structure easily so uh, so if i if i again use the same uh, same representation okay so we have the anions forming a close packed forming a cubic close packed and uh, we have one fourth of the tetrahedral voids okay let me show it in green this time so uh, so 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 if you take if you take the f this body diagonal then you can put a tetrahedral void along one fourth of this direction then uh, you skip the next one and you go to the you go to the alternate uh, corner okay so that will give you the tetrahedral void right here okay then again again you you take this tetrahedral void and you take this tetrahedral void so four of these alternate uh, tetrahedral voids you take okay so so that they are not they are not uh, adjacent to each other so these four tetrahedral voids are not adjacent to each other okay and uh, obviously uh, so uh, so this is sulfide and this is zinc okay zinc 2 plus sulfide 2 minus okay and uh, there might be some partial covalent character in these bonds okay but uh, we won't uh, discuss about that okay so so this is the sphalerite structure and uh, sphalerite or the zinc blend structure and uh, and again again it is very common there are several examples of uh, of uh, compounds that form the sphalerite structure so examples of course you have you have uh, zinc blend okay uh, then uh, then in the same group okay so you so you have zns okay but you also have uh, zinc cadmium so uh, you have uh, you have cadmium selenide cadmium telluride okay so selenium is in the same group as sulfur selenium and tellurium and cadmium is in the same group same uh, group as zinc you have mercury mercury compounds sulfides selenides tellurides of mercury okay uh, then then you have you also have 
you also have these uh, three five compounds that is uh, group three and group five. So, for example, you have boron nitrite, boron phosphide, boron arsenide, aluminum phosphide, okay, aluminum arsenide. Uh, gallium phosphate, gallium arsenide. Uh, you also have uh, you have gallium antimonide, Sp, indium phosphate, indium arsenide, indium antimonide. Okay, so these are these are some of the some of the some examples there are also some other uh, examples like uh, copper fluoride cuprous fluoride and cuprous cuprous chloride which also crystallize in this sphalerite structure okay so the zinc blend or the sphalerite structure is uh, is is another common structure that can be seen as as uh, it, that can be understood in terms of uh, ccp structure now uh, we will come back to to zns okay so zns actually has two structures okay this is the sphalerite form or the which is actually more stable uh, but uh, zns also forms a woodside crystal okay and we'll and we'll come to that uh, in a in a few slides Okay. Next, we are going to look at uh, these structures, fluorite and antifluorite. Okay, so here the let's uh, let's look at the antifluorite. Okay, so here the anion forms a CCP. Okay, and the cation occupies all tetrahedral voids. Okay. In the fluoride structure, the only difference is that uh, the cation forms the CCP and the anion occupies tetrahedral voids. Okay, so, so these two are you know related structures. The antifluorite is the is where the anions form the cubic close pack. But uh, but there's also a fluoride structure where the cations form the close back structure. Okay, and so this is very similar to the sphalerite. Only thing is, uh, instead of occupying only half the tetrahedral voids, you occupy all the tetrahedral voids. Okay, and uh, and uh, I will just I'll just give uh, some examples of these. No, well well okay. So let me let me show the fluoride structure. So you have. and uh, you can immediately say that since there are eight tetrahedral voids okay and uh, there are only four cubic close packed atoms okay so this will be a ax2 kind of kind of structure okay so the stoichiometry of the, of these fluoride compounds will be ax2 so all the tetrahedral voids are occupied for example this could be uh, this could be the na2o so so this could be oxygen and this blue could be sodium okay so this is na Two O. Okay, the stoichiometry, as I said, they they have to be two cations to one anion. Okay, in the so let me just give examples of these. So uh, examples of uh, antifluoride structure are uh, lithium oxide, lithium sulfide, lithium 
selenide lithium telluride sodium oxide which we have already seen and sodium sulfide okay so these are some of the examples so you can see that you know the first first group of the periodic table and uh, oxides typically these these because uh, these will be the smaller smaller uh, cations okay and so and so uh, these form the anti fluoride structure the fluoride structure okay so there are the examples of fluoride fluoride are uh, calcium fluoride srf2 barium fluoride calcium strontium barium okay uh, then cadmium fluoride lead oxide cerium oxide etc uranium oxide okay so these are these are some of the fluoride structures that are found okay and again the nice thing is you can understand both fluorite and antifluorite just in the same way okay and uh, and, uh, and 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 you can see that uh, that our understanding of uh, voids and uh, close packing is is actually very useful because you can easily categorize uh, crystal structures okay so 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 far we looked at uh, we looked at uh, the cubic close packed okay and we looked at uh, uh, voids and cubic close packed but uh, you can also have hexagonal close packed okay and you can have voids uh, you can have uh, you can have uh, other elements occupying the voids of the hexagonal flow spectrum okay and uh, i'll i'll just take two examples okay one is called wood site wood site and uh, uh, wood site is uh, uh, is is where in the where you have the anion forming a hexagonal flow spectrum and the cation occupying half of the tetrahedral voids okay and uh, now now in the case of in the case of hexagonal close packed okay we have seen the location of the tetrahedral and the octahedral voids okay and uh, if you if you recall in the in the hcp okay you have you have this arrangement of close packed arrangement of atoms in a layer so you have the close packed arrangement of atoms in a layer and uh, and uh, the next layer the next layer is right here the next layer is sitting here and right at this uh, right bit just below this uh, below this green green atom okay in or uh, uh, in between this green green atom and the and the atoms forming the blue plane there is a tetrahedral void so the tetrahedral void is located right here okay uh, so this tetrahedral void is located here and we also saw where the octahedral void will be located octahedral void will be located in this case uh, in this case since uh, since since uh, the, you will have a cubic close packed you will have a close packed arrangement of uh, of these green atoms okay so the green atoms will form another close packed array and there will be an octahedral void located right here okay so so this is the octahedral void and this is the tetrahedral void okay so so now so now what does word site look like okay let me i'll draw it in a slightly different way okay so let's again put the anion so 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 we'll take the hcp in this kind of representation
So, if you take the unit cell for hexagonal, Now, uh, we want half of the tetrahedral voids to be occupied okay? and uh, I should say that in this unit cell there is also an atom located, an anion that is located right here, okay? right uh, this is the this is the green layer, okay? let me show it in green. Okay, this is this layer that I had shown in green. This is also an anion. Okay, so the green layer is also an anion. Okay, we have to occupy half of the tetrahedral void. So, so let's take a tetrahedral void that is uh, directly below these. We can we can take one that is at the at the center of these three. Okay, and that will come somewhere here. Okay, and you can see that this is equidistant from each of these atoms. So, so this is this is one uh, one of the so uh, here here uh, what we'll do is uh, the tetrahedral void. Okay. With uh, show the green atom again. I'll just just do this again. Show the green atom right here. Okay, so the so the green atom is also an anion, which is shown in this intermediate, in this uh, in between these two hexagonal hexagonal layers. Okay. So so now now the the tetrahedral voids okay so there'll be one that is just above the green atom okay so uh, in this in this uh, you know right right in between these three these three atoms and when above the green atom so it'll be it'll be located right here okay um, Okay, so that will be that will be one uh, tetrahedral void. Additionally, there will also be tetrahedral voids, okay, which are uh, yeah. So there will be a tetrahedral void, okay, located also directly below this uh, green green atom, okay. And uh, so so uh, usually, what uh, if you want to occupy only half of the tetrahedral voids, then you can either occupy the one that is uh, above that is directly above the green atom or the one that is below the green atom okay so it is directly below the green atom as uh, as is shown in this uh, in this uh, figure here okay so what what i will show is uh, tetrahedral voids that are directly below the green atom so so i will leave this blue i will remove this blue blue uh, atom okay and i'll and i'll just show the tetrahedral void located directly below the green atom Okay, and uh, now there will be similar tetrahedral voids. Okay, you can you can work this out. Okay, there will be similar tetrahedral voids. Okay, located uh, right here. Here and here. So this will be directly below the red red uh, below this red. Uh, uh, anion okay and so and so and so these are half of the tetrahedral voids that are occupied in this uh, in this uh, in this unit cell okay so so this is the wood site structure and uh, wood site is actually quite common okay the there are several uh, like uh, Z, zno forms of wood site structure uh, zinc sulfide at high temperatures Okay, forms a forms a wood site structure. Okay, then there is uh, ZnTe, ZnSe. There is gallium nitride, gallium nitride. 
uh, zinc selenide, zinc telluride, cadmium sulfide, cadmium selenide. Okay, and uh, and we'll find and we'll see that you know several uh, several compounds. Okay, what that form the wurzite structure also form the sphalerite or the zinc blend structure. Okay, and uh, usually one of them is more stable than the other. Okay, so so there is always there is often a word site and uh, failerite. Okay, so the same compound, for example, like uh, zinc. Uh, Z and S can be either wurzite or sphalerite, and usually, usually there is an equilibrium, and uh, one of them is favored at some temperature. Similarly, gallium nitride can also form either a sphalerite or a, or a wurzite. Okay, and usually in in the case of gallium nitride, the wurzite is the more stable. In the case of uh, zinc sulfide, the sphalerite is the most stable. Sphalerite or zinc blend. Okay. Uh, the other structure that I'm going to talk about is nickel arsenide. In nickel arsenide, uh, you have uh, anion uh, forming an hexagonal close packed structure, and uh, cation occupying the octahedral voids. Okay, and uh, I'll just I'll just quickly show this. Okay, the, the nickel arsenide. So, so this is. This is nickel arsenide. Okay. And again, if you go back, if you go back to the previous notes to find out where exactly the octahedral voids are located, okay, uh, then you will see that uh, they will be located right in the in the yeah, I mean, right in between, in bet, uh, directly below below these three these three atoms. Okay, you can take you can actually alternate the octahedral and tetrahedral voids. That's uh, there is a, uh, there, there is a choice there. Okay, but so so it'll be located right here. Okay, and uh, I should show this. Uh, Yeah, and the other octahedral void will be located uh, symmetrically right symmetrically below uh, exactly here okay, so these are the octahedral voids so this would be the nickel arsenide structure and uh, again again there are several examples so there is uh, there is uh, nickel sulfide nickel arsenide nickel antimonide nickel selenide iron sulfide etc okay so these are some of the structures that come from close packed uh, that can be understood in terms of close packed structures okay now i'll just mention one other structure that is very common and this is the cesium chloride structure so in cesium chloride the chlorine chloride anion form a form a simple cubic structure okay and uh, and uh, cesium ions will will uh, occupy the body center position so the structure looks like this so you have the chloride ions forming a And the CCM ions occupying the body center. So you have CS plus Cl minus. Okay. This is another. Uh, th this is another fairly common structure. And uh, there are other compounds that uh, that form the CCM chloride structure. So you have CCM chloride, CCM bromide, CCM iodide. Uh, CCM cyanide, ammonium chloride, 
Okay, so these are these are examples of the cesium chloride structure. So with this, I will conclude this lecture. Okay, so in this lecture, we saw the crystal structures of several binary compounds, and uh, we saw how we can understand them in terms of uh, either a cubic close pack or a or a simple cubic arrangement of the anions with the cations occupying the voids. Okay. Now, uh, in, the, in the next lecture, I will look at uh, some more crystal structures, I will look at things like perovskites and spinels okay. and then, and then we will look at, uh, we will also look at alloys. Okay. So, uh, but I will conclude this lecture here, thank you. Mm -hmm.